This is Ken Boyd with St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our website, St. Louis Test Prep. And we'll go back to the website here in a minute. But I wanted to cover one of the areas that I'm asked about. Most of all, one of my most frequently requested topics on YouTube, which is deferred taxes. First of all, the point here is that with deferred taxes, there is a difference between your book or accounting income in your accounting records and the income that's posted to your tax return. Now, we can have both permanent differences and temporary differences. The example I'm doing here is a temporary difference. That is that eventually, and you'll see this later on the video, is that eventually book expense equals tax expense by the end of this. The most common example for temporary differences is depreciation expense. So we have a situation here where depreciation expense is different be book versus tax because for tax reasons the the um, method, the speed at which we depreciate is different from book. So that's the difference. So the way I set this up here is I have pre-tax accounting income at the top. How much the company made before considering depreciation. I have depreciation for taxes, and you can see that it's an accelerated method because there's more tax depreciation in the early years than in the later years. So if I subtract the pre-accounting income, income in blue less depreciation for taxes in green, I get taxable income. We multiply that by a tax rate in this column, 2009 is 30%. And we end up with taxes payable, which is the check we need to write for taxes. So you can see as we work across, the depreciation is higher in the early years, 09, 010. It's lower in the later years. So now what I do is I point out that there's two types of depreciation used. For book, we're using the straight line method, which is an equal amount of depreciation each year. In this case, $30,000 a year. For tax, you just saw we use an accelerated method, but there's an important point here. These are temporary differences because if you look at total depreciation, and this may be one of the most important things on the slides, total book depreciation equals total tax depreciation, there's no difference in total depreciation over time. For example, if I click on this cell, there's the sum in blue of all the straight line method book depreciation. And if I click on this cell, there's the sum of the accelerated method we're using for tax. And in total, there's no difference. We're depreciating $120,000 using both methods. And here's where it gets tricky. You can see that there's a difference between book and tax, and we end up having temporary differences. In 2009, for example, it's a difference of $9,600 $9, more tax depreciation than book. 2010, the number's larger. It's 22800 And then it flips. And what I mean by that is, in 2011... There's more book depreciation by $12,000, and in 2012, there's more book depreciation by a larger number, 20400 So the way I set this up is we need to calculate the tax impact of these differences in depreciation expense, and that's what we do down here where it says temporary differences by year. So there's the $9,600 difference in 2009. We multiply that by the tax rate for that year. and You've got to look at individual tax rates per year because they change from 30% to a tax rate of 40%. So if I multiply the difference by the tax rate in 2009, I get a year imbalance of $2,800. If I take the tax difference in 2010, which you saw above, $9,600 plus $22,800 gets you a cumulative difference of $32,400. I multiply that by the tax rate to get $9,720. But since I already recognized the impact of the 09 expense, I have to remove that 
because I already recognize that impact. So the difference is just for 2010, 6840. 2011, again, we take the sum, the cumulative effect for 09, 010, 11. It's 20,400. We multiply that by a tax rate to get 8160. But again, we have to subtract out the differences in the prior year. In this case, 97.20 in brown to get 15.60. And then in the final year, the amount we have left, 81.60, and it all evens out. So what we've done here is take the cumulative differences, multiply it by the current year tax rate, which you'll see changes year to year. We get a balance. We subtract the prior balance and we get an entry that we need to make down here for the temporary difference. Now let's finish up by talking about that entry. So in 09, the income tax expense is the sum of a deferred tax liability of 2880, meaning that we have a higher tax expense and less income now on the tax return. We're going to have higher income and higher tax in later years. We're taking more tax deduction now, less tax deduction later, so we will have more of a tax liability later by 2880. We take the 6120, the check we write to the government, which is the tax liability that we figured out up here, taxes payable, the sum of those two numbers is income tax expense. Same sort of setup in 2010. The deferred tax liability, we're going to owe more taxes later by 6840. We take the check that we need to write for our taxes payable from 2010. The sum of those two numbers is our income tax expense, the sum of the liability and the payable. In 2011 and 12, we see that book income Book, de tax depreciate, book depreciation is higher than tax depreciation, so it reverses. We have a deferred tax asset in 11 and 12 because we're going to have less taxes and less income later. We have an income tax payable that, again, is the check that we write to the government based on our profit and loss. And so we have deferred tax assets, which help us later. Deferred tax liabilities means more liability later. Deferred tax asset, a debit to the account, means lower tax expense and lower tax in later years. So it's a benefit. A deferred tax asset is a benefit. And then if you see how these those four numbers are linked, we see the deferred tax assets from the two early years. The deferred tax, I'm sorry, deferred tax liabilities early years credit, deferred tax assets later years debit, and they offset each other. And we're all done handling a deferred tax liability. That's as far as we're going to get on deferred taxes. If you go to my website, I teach the toughest accounting topics, the topics that I'm most asked about in small group live chats on a continuing basis. Here are the topics. We're changing the dates so they're always available as time goes on. You can go to the website and look for that. You'll also find my book, Cost Accounting for Dummies. I teach a free online course for the book every week. And there's the cover of the book. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.